Hey guys, it's Kevin from Spiritus Systems and today we're going to talk about the second part of the cold weather layering series and that is on the wind layer. The wind layer is probably the most overlooked and I think is the most misunderstood uh, piece or component in the layering system. To me, I think it's probably the most important piece in the system um, or one that needs to be considered the most. So the function of the wind layer is to prevent convective heat loss by putting some type of barrier between you and uh, the very cold wind. Some people will achieve this by using their rain jacket as a wind layer, uh, but I think that is, is not the best intended purpose of that because a rain jacket will block all the wind and all the rain, which doesn't allow heat and uh, moisture to escape from the inside. Uh, so you'll often find yourself being wet and overheated because you have that windproof barrier. Your wind layer should be wind resistant, but not to the point uh, where it blocks 100% of the wind. You do want a little bit of airflow between the layer. Uh, not much, you just need to take the cold bite out of the wind, and that's what's gonna keep you comfortable. The biggest problem uh, that we encounter in cold weather is really not trying to stay warm. Uh, it's being too warm while you're moving. Now there is a time and a place where you will need a rain jacket, but generally I'm going to be wearing my wind layer in favor of that. Uh, and that's what I'm going to wear most of the time. And I'm going to save my rain jacket for the times when it's actually raining. So just like the base layer video where I talk about the different fabric options and weights and styles, there's going to be numerous options to choose from uh, on the market for a wind layer. Every company is going to have a different idea of what they think a wind layer is. Uh, you'll have one extreme where you know you have the the ultra marathon runner side where they have basically just the thinnest shirt possible uh, with a bunch of reflective stuff on it and then you'll have the other end where you have a very bulky soft shell type jacket where it's fleece lined on the inside. Generally, I want something in between those two. I want it to be durable, but I also want it to be breathable. So the wind layer should be sized to fit over the largest puffy jacket that you're going to bring, uh, but it also shouldn't be too baggy uh, to where you cannot wear it over just your base layer, because most of the time, you're gonna be wearing the wind layer directly over the base layer. There is a problem in the modern outdoor market, uh, which, it has been taken over by the fashion industry. So a lot of these layers are gonna fit much tighter and be kind of restrictive because they're going off how it looks in the city and not how it performs uh, in the mountains. You wanna have full range of motion with whatever layer that you're wearing. Uh, and then when you layer something on top of that, you, want still, you still want full range of motion as well. Something to consider when you're buying a wind layer is how it fits. Uh, and you should try it on over all your jackets and make sure uh, it's not restricting your movement that way as well. So with that being said, let's talk about one of my favorite wind layers and that is the Hill People Gear Wind Cheater. So the Wind Cheater is actually a version of, of the First Spear Wind Cheater jacket. It's the same material, which is a 330 denier brushed nylon, but this one has a little bit different fit and a slightly different pocket configuration than the first beer version. Uh, the first beer version will have pockets on the sleeves, which are nice if you're wearing a, a plate carrier and you need access to some type of pockets. This one has uh, large Napoleon pockets and then it has hand, hand warmer pockets uh, there as well. Another thing to note about the wind cheater jacket is that you have large pit zips on the sides, which allows for mechanical venting. Uh, another thing to note about that is that you can zip down the center to dump heat as well. And that's going to be the biggest advantage of having a zippered um, wind layer instead of a pullover, is that you have this whole torso section to dump the heat. It also makes putting the jacket on and taking it off much easier as you're not having to fight with any type of headgear as you would with something like a pullover or an anorak. For those of you that don't know, an anorak is a pullover type of jacket that only has like a three quarter type of zip. So this jacket is actually probably the most breathable that I've encountered as a wind layer. Um, so this one doesn't have 
really any stretch to it like you would see with like a stretchy soft shell, but the cut of the jacket does not impede movement whatsoever. So uh, in this case, it's, it's not really needed because it fits correctly. I will say that this jacket is sized a little bit larger where I would normally wear an extra large jacket in modern uh, outdoor uh, clothing. This one I only have to use a large, uh, which classically that's what I would use uh, until the outdoor industry kind of changed their sizing. So the wind cheater jacket is uh, extremely durable. I've chimneyed through sandstone slot canyons in these and it looks like nothing has happened to it. Uh, if you tried to do that with something like a rain jacket, it would be torn up immediately. So the abrasion resistance and the durability of this jacket is a huge pro. Um, the one downside of this jacket though is that it's going to be a little bit bulkier and it's going to weigh more than some of the other options that are out there. Uh, with that being said, this is still my favorite jacket to use uh, in any type of outdoor situation. So another way that this one differs from the first beer version is that this one has a zipper in the hood, uh, which is actually really cool, is that you can attach a coyote fur ruff. Most jackets on the market are not going to have actual fur. They're gonna be synthetic type of fur. Uh, this one is an actual coyote pelt. Um, and the advantage of this is that it allows you to have uh, warmth around your face. So you can button this up. Uh, you know, you can wear your puffy jacket over this and still have this fur um, around your face. So this will keep, you know, the cold wind from, you know, really beaten down on your face. It'll prevent some of the sun from beating down on your face as well. This was a big part of you know, how the Inuits would live uh, in the northern climates. Uh, and this is a big part of their survival uh, in very cold weather. So these are super handy. You know, uh, one downside about these is that it does have a little bit higher profile uh, if you are in some kind of tactical situation. Uh, and you don't have quite as good periphery vision because of the fur if you are wearing this. Another thing that's cool about the fur ruff is that you can wear this just over a ball cap um, and you can just throw this on once you stop and your ears start to get a little bit cold instead of wearing something like a beanie which would normally be too hot as you're moving. This gives you the advantage of you know, stopping, throwing the hood on, keeping your ears very warm, your face warm, and then when you start moving again as you warm up you can just throw this off and still have your ball cap on. Another thing to note about the wind cheater jacket is that these are helmet compatible hoods, so these will fit over your helmet uh, if that's something that you want as well. So on to the next jacket. So another jacket I want to talk about is this uh, Orc Industries PCU jacket uh, or wind shirt. This is a surplus style jacket, so you can maybe find this on eBay or something similar to it. Um, or at your local surplus store. The big advantage of this over something like the wind cheater is it's, it's a lighter and more packable. So if you're not gonna be wearing this most of the time uh, and you have to have it in your pack, it's not gonna be such a disadvantage as something more bulky and heavy. So this jacket does have an advantage if you're wearing it with something like a plate carrier. It does have sleeve pockets. So if you need you know, some extra storage, you have it there. Um, also, you can get some mechanical uh, venting through these pockets because on the inside, you know, they're just made of mesh. So it allows, you know, air and moisture to escape uh, through those pockets if you need to vent. So a similar jacket to this that you can find on the civilian market is the Outdoor Research Ferrosi jacket. It has a similar weight and feel to this jacket. The Ferrosi jacket will have a little bit more stretch than this one as they do use more uh, spandex in the material. You know, however you think about that, that could be a pro or a con. One thing to note about these jackets is that the inside of them are not seam sealed, which you would normally find in something like a rain jacket. This will shed a light amount of rain, but once it starts to uh, get into more of a downpour, you really want to transfer over to something like a proper rain jacket that does have its seam sealed. So water will eventually get in through right here, uh, but this also allows air and moisture to escape the jacket as well, which is the reason why we're using this jacket. So uh, another cool thing about this jacket, um, it, it does have some uh, elastic panels right here, so it does allow you to have more range of motion. 
Uh, and like the wind cheater jacket, this one has cinches on the bottom as well. So, you know, you can cinch this tight around your waist. Some people like, you know, to button it up. Other people like to have it loose so airflow can flow through the bottom as well. Uh, but, you know, having that option is nice. So another thing about this jacket is that it has a stowable hood. Uh, to me, I like to have a hood on all my jackets, but having a stowable hood is kind of an advantage. If you're gonna be wearing something like a helmet all the time where, where a hood would really just kind of get in the way, and you can wear this without a hood. You know, the hood will be stowed in there uh, and then it's not getting in your way of all your other kit. Again, that's, this is the Orc Industries, you know, PCU wind shirt. You can find stuff similar to this on the civilian market, or you can find it down at your local surplus store. So the next jacket is gonna be a little bit different. This one's gonna be from Audi Gear. So this is the Audi Gear wind shirt. And this is a little bit different. It uses a, a different type of material that's gonna be more weather resistant. So you'll be able to fend off a, you know, a rainstorm a little bit longer in this one than you would in some of the other layers. Um, with that being said, uh, since it, it is more weather resistant, it is going to be a little bit louder. Um, so you have to take that into consideration and what type of scenario you are in. You can uh, throw this through the wash a few times and make the fabric a little bit more supple. That way it won't be quite as loud uh, when you're using it. Another cool thing about this jacket is that, you know, it does come in multi-cam alpine. So you can use this as an overwhite. There's matching pants to this as well. Uh, one thing to note about sizing is that this does have a little bit tighter fit. So if you do plan to use it as something like an overwhite, uh, size up at least one, maybe even two sizes, uh, if that's your intended use case. Another thing to note about this jacket is that uh, the material is flame resistant. So if that's a concern of yours, you know, this may be the jacket to look at. One thing about this is there, there are no pockets. There are no like hand warmer pockets on this jacket. Uh, and the idea is to keep this, you know, low weight, low bulk. This thing does a pretty good job at that. And you won't notice it in your pack as, as much as some of the other layers. So another one to talk about is the field shirt. You know, this is not gonna be as effective as a uh, wind cheater jacket or a soft shell. You know, you're not gonna have the hood, uh, but this does a pretty decent job at blocking the wind. It's, it's certainly gonna be better than just your base layer. Uh, one thing to note is that you wanna make sure you're getting a, at least a 50-50 nylon cotton blend. Um, some of the older field shirts will be 100% cotton, and you wanna avoid those, especially because back in the day, they used to starch them pretty heavily. So you wanna find one that's uh, actually pretty clean uh, and you can get these pretty cheap at any surplus store or on eBay. Um, but one thing to consider as a cost-effective option as a wind shirt. Uh, so this one here, uh, this one is a mountain hardware. Basically, it's kind of a fleece, but they call this type of fleece windstopper fleece. Um, so it may be confusing. You may think of this as like, hey, this is going to be my, my wind layer. Um, but in actuality, this is more of an insulation layer, and it's generally going to be too warm to wear while you're uh, generating a lot of heat. You know, this is basically just a fleece with a windstopper liner uh, in, in the jacket. Um, sure, it does a good job at stopping the wind. And the reason that they have these in these fleeces is because fleece normally um, doesn't do anything against the wind. So that's why they kind of came up with this, this windstopper style. Um, another style of soft shell that I would generally avoid is it's something like that PCU jacket, but on the inside it is lined with fleece. Those are gonna be way too hot to wear if you're doing any type of hiking or rucking. But I will say that those do a pretty decent job if you're static. Say if you're just manning a checkpoint uh, or you're a turret gunner, um, those will be fine as they are pretty, pretty warm for what they are and generally much less bulky than a, a puffy jacket and generally much more durable than something like a puffy jacket as well. So uh, I would only recommend that type of soft shell jacket in those circumstances, 
not for moving in cold weather. So to kind of wrap it up, uh, I believe the wind layer should be in your kit. You know, you should consider getting some type of wind layer uh, for your kit in cold weather. Uh, it has plenty of advantages to, to make it worth the wait. Um, you know, especially something like this windsheeter jacket, when it's cold out, this thing hardly comes off of my body. So again, to, you know, talk about the stackable layering system, I'm going to wear this directly over my base layer. If I have to stop for an extended period of time and I don't expect to move at a moment's notice, I will then take my insulation layer and throw that on over my wind layer. I don't want to have to take my wind layer off, put my puffy jacket on, and then put my wind layer back on over that. I want to just go up or down in that system. So having the wind layer will provide you a little bit of insulation. So when you do have to stop momentarily, you won't be as chilled as wearing just a base layer. It will block the wind from cooling you down too much. But once you start moving again, you will not overheat in this jacket as quickly as you would with something like a puffy jacket or a rain jacket. That is the reason I believe you should have a, a uh, wind layer in your kit, uh, whether it be a soft shell, a wind shirt, or something like this wind cheater. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about the insulation layer uh, and the different types of fills and different weights of them. Uh, there's a lot of considerations when you're, when you're choosing a puffy jacket. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.